Hi guys, it's Morgan, and today I'm going to be talking about differences between the book and the movie Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Now, if you haven't read the book or seen the movie, this video will contain spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, read the book and watch the movie. Read all of the Harry Potter books and see all of the movies while you're at it, and then come back. Or if you don't care about being spoiled, keep watching. So here are differences between the book and the movie Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. In the book, after Dobby used the hover charm, Harry gets a letter from the Ministry of Magic telling him that they know a hover charm was performed and reminding him that he can't do magic outside of Hogwarts. But this doesn't happen in the movie. And while it makes sense that it doesn't happen in the movie because it doesn't really do anything to further the story, it would have been interesting if it did because at that part in the book, that's when the Dursleys find out that Harry isn't allowed to do magic outside of Hogwarts. And in the movies, it's never really revealed if they know that or not. In the book, Harry denomes the Weasleys' garden with Ron, Fred, and George but that doesn't happen in the movie. Which really is too bad because I think it would have been a really entertaining scene. In the book, when Harry and Ron get to Hogwarts after crashing into the Whomping Willow, they're watching the sorting and wondering where Snape is, and it's revealed that Snape is behind them. In the movie, when they get to Hogwarts, they run into Filch and he takes them to Snape. I thought the book version was funnier how Harry and Ron are coming up with ideas of where Snape could be, and then from behind them they hear, or maybe he's waiting to hear why you two didn't arrive on the school train. In the book, the howler that Mrs. Weasley sends is only about Harry and Ron taking the flying car to Hogwarts. But in the movie, along with yelling about the car, she also congratulates Ginny on getting into Gryffindor, which I thought was pretty funny. I felt like the book had a lot more of Lockhart being really full of himself. I mean, he was full of himself in the movie, but I don't think it was the same level as it is in the book. An example of Lockhart being really full of himself that was in the book that wasn't in the movie is when he said that the reason that Harry took the flying car to Hogwarts was because he had given Harry a taste of publicity when they took a picture for the Daily Prophet. Lockhart annoyed me a lot more in the book than he did in the movie. Harry's first time meeting Colin Creevy is another difference between the book and the movie. In the movie, Colin is obviously really excited about meeting Harry and takes his picture, which also happens in the book. But in the book, after taking his picture, Colin asks Harry if he can sign the picture and Draco Malfoy shows up and starts making fun of Harry for giving out signed photos. But that doesn't happen in the movie. And I'm actually glad it doesn't because Colin Creevy is so sweet and innocent that I wouldn't have liked to see Draco being mean to him. In the book, Neville falls from the chandelier and almost hits Lockhart. But in the movie, at the end of that scene, Neville is still hanging on the chandelier and says, why is it always me? Which is one of my favorite lines. In the book, Hermione doesn't know what the term mudblood means, but in the movie she does and explains it to Harry. But in the book, Ron and Hagrid explain it to Harry and Hermione. I thought it was really weird that Hermione didn't know what mudblood meant in the book. I mean, considering that she's a pretty smart girl, you would think she would know what it means. Which is why it made a lot of sense that she knew what it meant in the movie. In the book, and the movie, the first time that Harry hears the Basilisk voice is when he's doing detention with Lockhart. In the movie, after he leaves the detention, he runs into Ron and Hermione and tells them what he heard, and then they find Mrs. Norris petrified. In the book, they find Mrs. Norris petrified after leaving nearly Headless Nick's death day party. The death day party isn't in the movie, 
Which is really too bad because that would have been a really cool scene. And the movies never really show a lot of the ghosts. I mean, we see them sometimes, but not a lot. In the book, the first time that Harry, Ron, and Hermione see Moaning Myrtle is at Nearly Headless Nick's death day party. But in the movie, the first time they see her is when they're making the Polyjuice Potion in the bathroom that Moaning Myrtle haunts. I felt really bad for Moaning Myrtle in the book when Peeves was being really mean to her at the death day party. In the book, Professor Binns tells the class about the Chamber of Secrets after Hermione asks him about it. But in the movie, it's McGonagall that tells her class about it. Now, Professor Binns isn't in the movie, so it makes sense that McGonagall would be the one to tell them about it. And also, since it's implied in the books that Professor Binns is really boring, if he was in the movie, that scene would probably have sounded really boring. In the book, Harry, Ron, and Hermione need a teacher's signature to get a book from the restricted section of the library that'll tell them how to make Polyjuice Potion. So they get Lockhart's signature. But I guess in the movie, the book wasn't in the restricted section, so they didn't need a teacher's signature. Which I guess is okay, but it would have been funny to see Hermione asking the librarian, Madame Pince, if she could keep Lockhart's signature. In the book, Harry, Ron, and Hermione need ingredients for the Polyjuice Potion that they can only get from Snape's office. So in Potions class, Harry causes a distraction, and Hermione sneaks into the office to get what they need. But I guess in the movie, they were able to get all the ingredients they needed because they didn't sneak into Snape's office. Which I guess makes sense, but at the same time, I kinda wish that scene was in the movie because it would have been cool to see Hermione sneaking into Snape's office, which is something you would never suspect Hermione to do. In the book, everyone participates in the dueling club, and then Harry and Draco duel in front of everyone. But in the movie, only Harry and Draco duel. Which makes sense, because they probably wanted to get to the reveal that Harry can speak parcel tongue quickly. In the book, when Harry's in Dumbledore's office and he sees the sorting hat, he puts it on and asks it if it put him in the right house. And while he does ask the sorting hat that same question in the movie, in the movie he doesn't put it on. And I kind of like the way it was in the movie better because it showed that you don't have to be wearing the hat to talk to it. In the book, on Valentine's Day, Lockhart gets dwarves to dress up as cupids to give the students out their valentines. And one of them sings a valentine to Harry from Ginny, which doesn't happen in the movie. And I guess it didn't really need to happen in the movie, but at the same time, if it did, it would have shown the beginning of Ginny's feelings for Harry. In the book, when Harry, Ron, and Fang follow the spiders into the Forbidden Forest, Spiders find them and take them to Aragog. But in the movie, they walk the whole way to Aragog's lair. I kind of liked how it happened in the movie better than it happened in the book. Because to me, it didn't really make sense that in the book, the spiders took them to where they were already going anyway. In the book, Ginny almost tells Harry and Ron that she's the one who opened the Chamber of Secrets but then she's interrupted by Percy. But that doesn't happen in the movie. But I kind of wish that it did, because if it did, if you hadn't read the book and saw the movie, and if that scene was in the movie, you probably would have thought that it was weird, but once the movie was over, you would have understood it. In the book, it's revealed that the crowing of a rooster is fatal to a basilisk, but that's not really mentioned in the movie, at least in the version of the movie that I have, because I know in some versions it is mentioned. But in the movie, if you look at the page that um, Hermione had when she was petrified, if you look at it when Harry and Ron are looking at it, it says on the page that a crowing of a rooster is fatal to a basilisk. In the book, after saving Ginny and defeating Tom Riddle in the Chamber of Secrets, Harry, Ron, Ginny, and Lockhart go to McGonagall's office where Mr. and Mrs. Weasley are. 
but that doesn't happen in the movie. Which makes sense, because it didn't really need to be in the movie. Even though it would have been a sweet scene to see how Mr. and Mrs. Weasley reacted when they realized that Ginny was alive. But it didn't really need to be there. Now, these are some moments from the book that were filmed, but ended up being deleted scenes. At least in the version of the movie that I have, because I know that in some versions, these scenes are in the movie. When Harry overhears Draco and Lucius Malfoy in Borgen and Burks, when Lockhart gives them a quiz all about him, and when Harry overhears students talking about how he is the heir of Slytherin. Thanks for watching guys! Let me know in the comments if there's something that happened in the book that didn't happen in the movie, but you wish that it happened in the movie. Also, the next time you see me, I'll be 22, because tomorrow, June 30th, is my birthday. So, see you in the next video.